Grassroots political organization and voter advocacy group Voto Latino is launching a massive campaign to unseat Senator Kirsten Sinema. On the Adios Cinema launch site, it reads, Voto Latino is investing six figures to hold Senator Cinema accountable during the 2024 primary for her obstruction of critical voting reforms, minimum wage increases, pandemic relief for undocumented Latinos, and other reforms that would protect and uplift millions of Latinos. The move comes after the Arizona Democratic Party formally censored Cinema on Saturday for blocking movement on voting rights. Let's take a look. Our job as a Democratic Party is, of course, to support our candidates and engage voters across our state. But as we continue to see voter suppression legislation come through our state legislature here in Arizona and all across the state, it is imperative that we take action on, on voting rights at a federal level. So the stakes are simply too high. We do see that our democracy is at risk. So uh, although our party, of course, is really a true coalition and, and there is room for disagreement on policies on this issue, it, it, it was, it, we were consistent. We have been vocal over the last year and we, we had asked the senator to please take action and not let any obstruction on voting rights. President and CEO of Voto Latino, Maria Teresa Kumar, joins us now to discuss. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. So um, talk to us about the likelihood of unseating cinema. You know, one of the defenses we always hear about cinema and Joe Manchin is that they are it, what they're losing in progressive voters. They're more than making up for in moderate voters and even Republicans. Address that for us. Talk to us about about this. Right. So Senator Manchin is from uh, West Virginia, where the demographics are simply very different. And he won a state that went for that went for Trump. It's a completely different ballgame. And I would say that he is acting in the vein of what his constituents are asking and expecting from him. Uh, Senator Cinema comes from a state where it's just in the Latino community, it's 32% Latino. We're not including the Native American community that's quite large as well, and the African American and Asian community. And so the, what she has done is she went in acting as if she was one person, and we've been very clear with her what the expectations were. And right before she took the vote, you know, myself and a couple other Latino leaders talked to her, explaining that in the Arizona doorstep, in the state legislature, one of the most obstructionist uh, pieces of legislation that would allow a state legislator to overturn a fair certified election was being passed through the house, through their through her state house at that very moment. And what we're asking from her was very clear: is like, let's make sure that every single person has equal access to the voting booth disproportionately this legislation was going to impact that 32% of individuals that I shared with you. She has a very difficult pathway. Even if she were to go independent, she was going to, she's going to have a hard time bringing in the Democratic base, which is not true for Manchin. Manchin has a very, again, a very different constituency in West Virginia. Well, do you, I mean, generally, political actors are wise. They don't, like, plan to lose power. What do you, what do you think... Do you, do you think Cinema is truly? She's turning her back on her base. She's harming her political futures, and and that's just it at the end of the day. I have to share with you. We have been all of us in Washington and at the local level have been trying to scratch our heads, trying to figure out what is her true north. I will tell you. You know, I'm on the board of Emily's List, and Emily's List for the very first time said that they were not going to endorse a candidate because of voting rights, because it, it is an epidemic happening across the country. When you talk to individual leaders at the local level, and I'm, and this is not just the, you know, the the ultra progressive, but I'm talking about business leaders. I'm talking about hospital workers. They are disillusioned with her path. And for us at Voto Latino, our job is to create enfranchisement, making sure that every single American, regardless of color or creed, has equal access to the voting booth. That's not happening in her doorstep. Her, and it's so hard for me to imagine that she was not watching that, you know, that trumped up audit that took place in her state, talk, trying to overturn an election that fed to the big lie. And again, not taking the recourse that if it was only in Arizona and no other state, maybe you could take it a pass. But but it's in over 19 states where they are disproportionately trying to change the rules after all 50 states in 2020 certified a free and fair election. So, Maria, I think that Kirsten Cinema, in her defense, I suppose, um, she says that the only reason why she voted, that she is in support of the voting rights 
bill that she that she's in support of many of the measures, but it was the filibuster that was the issue. She doesn't want to get rid of the filibuster. And I think that is something that a lot of the moderate Democrats, obviously uh, many of the moderate Republicans that she was able to gain as constituents uh, agree that they don't want to eliminate the ability for the minority to have some sort of vo voice in the Senate. What do you say to that? I've had deep conversations with moderate senators uh, talking about how they can reform the filibuster during certain parameters. And we had that conversation with her as well. If you really believe in the archaic Jim Crow, you know, legacy of the filibuster, which was to protect the minority as a majority of Americans were coming to, to fruition that were multicultural, then go back to where its original roots, where people would have, senators would have to stand on that floor and speak to the filibuster and make it germane to the issues that, that were at hand. But this idea that you don't have to actually sit, stand there for hours on end to actually basically run down the clock to change the minds of the American people, to be so wedded to a, to, you know, to a parliamentary procedure that voters didn't vote for, not only seems on the wrong side of history, but then I also remind Senator Sinema that when we have to suspend the, the filibuster, whether it's for the suspension of of the debt ceiling, for example, that she voted for, she seems okay with it. So she can't have it all the ways. It has to make sure that if she is going to abide by these ideas that she wants to maintain the filibuster, well, then go back to its origins, and then we could have a conversation. Well, MSNBC host Rachel Maddow covered the news from Voto Latino. Let's take a look at that. Tonight, we can report exclusively that one of the nation's largest and most effective Latino grassroots organizations, Voto Latino, is announcing a big ad campaign to unseat Kirsten Sinema in her next primary and get her out of the United States Senate. They've launched a new website. It's called adioscinema.org. Senator Sinema is not up for re-election for another two years. We still have an entire midterm election before voters will even get the chance to cast a ballot against her. But Arizona Democrats and national progressive groups and now this very influential Latino voters group um, they are preparing for that fight. I did not expect it to go this direction, but it has with an exclamation point. As to who would be Cinema's primary challenger, a new Data for Progress poll finds likely challenger Representative Ruben Gallego would win the contest in a landslide. Citing sources close to the situation, Punchbowl News reported that he traveled to New York last week to meet with some of Cinema's donors about a potential Senate run in 2024. Maria, what do you think of Maddow's reaction to the campaign against Cinema, and what are your thoughts on Gallego reaching out to Cinema's donors? So I have to share with you that for us going into this fight, it's not light, but our job is to enfranchise all Americans. And when we see little d democracy in trouble, that's why we stepped in. And we stepped in early specifically because we wanted to basically sound the alarm that things are not OK at the state levels, that the very vote many of us cast in 2020 may not be eligible to be to be done again in 22 because of the disenfranchisement. So that was one. But the other is also to allow other candidates to open up the field, because we all know that in order to run for Senate, you need to build a war chest. And I think that it's great that Gallegos is you know, stepping into the ring and exploring it. And I know that there are many other ones that are also exploring as well. And that's what we want. We want to make sure that there's fair, equal representation. And I think for too long, people, once they get into the Senate, they believe that it's a lifelong journey and they believe that, that their, their seat is secure. But this is very much telling the senators that it's important for them to actually heed to the request of their of their constituencies at minimum to ensure that they could all vote equally at the ballot box. Do you think there's a chance she's going to switch parties? I was just going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> she may. I think I mean, she she may or she also can may become independent. But if she were to switch parties, Arizona, we at Voto Latino, we registered and turned out 32,000 individuals in the last election. 50% of them were first time voters. Biden won by that state by 12,000 uh, 12, votes. Between the last election and the time she's up for a reelection, there's going to be 162,000 more young Latinos eligible to vote because they've aged in. The demographics of Arizona are not the same demographics of John McCain. And that is because of the rise of young Latinos coming of age in that state. And I can tell you that 
the issue for us is the democracy of of Arizona is making sure they could be enfranchised. But the other issues that she promised the Arizona constituency, whether it's being a real champion for immigration rights, whether it's you know fighting for that minimum wage, she hasn't been there. So it's going to be a very difficult contested race. And I do think that it would be very difficult for a Republican to to be able to, to take the seat. We look at Mark Kelly. He has been a champion of these rights and he is enjoying a 76 percent approval rating in Arizona. So it's so it's an asymmetric metrical uh, leadership right now that represents them in Washington. Well, Maria Teresa Kumar, thank you so much for joining us. Tomorrow on Rising, author Peter Goodman joins us to discuss his new book, Davos Man, How Billionaires Devoured the World. And policy director at the National Religious Campaign Against Torture, Matt Hawthorne, will tell us how faith groups are working together to shut down Guantanamo Bay. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss a video, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.